Digitalization of materials also means that we will be able to develop something like a digital twin of the material. The digital twin inside uh, can mean that we uh, have a representation of the microstructure, but it also means that we have a representation of the behavior of the material. So that depends on the, the viewing angle on the digital twin. Uh, a user of a material will be more or less interested in uh, what does it mean, uh, what's the state of the material, how is the performance at the moment, what's the lifetime and so on. So it's more like the output of the digital twin which is interesting uh, for somebody who runs an application. The input we need to do is on the one hand side we have to look at the, the data we put in. So we call them data spaces because we want, don't want to be so specific. It's not just only a data point or anything like that, but it can be also uh, a connection between uh, informations and so on. So it's more like what you can see, like a tree diagram or anything like that, where, where the data is connected to each other, data sets are connected and they make up the, the information we need for the digital twin. Uh, on the other hand, if we have the data, that's a more like a static description of the material state at a given time. And that doesn't help me predicting what the property will be if I keep going uh, with a certain load in an application. So what we really need is the representation can be either, for example, physical based modeling so that we can use physics and uh, the information of how materials and degradation materials behave under certain conditions. So that means I need to be able, for example, to simulate on, on the side of the electrons, uh, on, on, a, on the size scale of molecules or atoms, uh, maybe on the size scale of the defects, that's a little bit higher, or in the continuum, which is close to the geometry of the application. And if I can uh, go through all these scales in a very simple way, then I will be able to predict what happens if I continue with a certain uh, loading condition. And that's based uh, ultimately on experiments and simulations and that gives me these data spaces where I am not simply have a state but also the connection to the next state or uh, a tool like a simulation to predict what happens uh, in the next step. The same can be also true if I, if I stay, let's say, just take data and, and predict it by numerical modeling uh, or data-based modeling and that could be uh, a neural network or a machine learning algorithm I'm using to interpret what I'm seeing when I look at a state and to the next state and what's the connection between the two and how, how does the material uh, change while I'm putting a load on it. Yeah? And, and if I can uh, either put it into a, st a statistics-based or a data-based model or a physics-based model or something like a gray box model where I put both together in a more like a hybrid version, then I will be able to deliver that information which is necessary for the application itself.